Okay, good morning, God bless you. Welcome to Effective Life Church and Effective Life Ministry. Uh, God bless you, hope that you're well. Uh, we enter into 2021 with uh, the restrictions of uh, lockdown and so uh, we will continue to do the online teaching for all of you, please remember to drop in, to share them with other people. They really do encourage people. And uh, today we're going to look at our attitude in entering into 2021. Uh, often it's our attitude that affects our altitude. You know, often, you know, it's about attitude, it's about our faith, it's about our character. Uh, that bring in the fulfilment of what God has for us and it's so easy in this day and age where everything has become so self-focused uh, and even the pandemic has caused that as well uh, for us really to take our eyes off of the Lord in what we're doing and they are difficult days I just encourage you my wife works in ICU and uh, you know they're dealing with nearly 300 patients and she's she's flat out and so please be careful be wise in this time you know allow the holy spirit to lead you and uh, i trust that you will remain safe and well so we're going to crack into the new year with this word so it, it, if you want a title it's seek first the kingdom of god seek first the kingdom of god so I'm going to read a portion of scripture and then we'll, we'll just chew that over. So Matthew 6 verse 19, Matthew 6 verse 19. And it says, do not store up for yourself uh, treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal. Now, Jesus is the one who's sharing this whole teach here. And before he's done this teach, he's, he's basically been teaching uh, about prayer and the right attitude in prayer, right motives in prayer and how to continue in prayer, how to war in prayer, all these different things. And then he comes out of that teaching and he enters into, if you like, how to get the results of prayer in attitude. So he says, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth. And in this day and age, that's very, very much uh, the drive of humanity. Get all you can and sit on the can. Uh, my name's Jimmy, I'll have all you can give me. You know, it's that kind of mentality. And treasures and values have changed. You know, what we regard as important, you know. And so uh, Jesus is turning around, he's saying, look, don't store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy. And you have, we have to keep a real focus on what is a treasure, what is really a treasure. You know, the, 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 the nice car, the nice suit, the nice hat, they're all fine. God bless your heart, enjoy them. You know, God has made all these things for us to enjoy, but they are passing treasures. They're not eternal. They are things to help us to live our lives that we need, or they're things there to bless us. And we can use them to bless other people, but ultimately, they're not the uh, eternal treasure. None of physical is eternal even our own bodies it says will be exchanged the uh, mortality for immortality so verse 20 but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also and that's very true you know you can just look at uh, where we invest our time where we invest our finances where we become vulnerable is pretty much where a lot of our treasures are and uh, you know some treasures in this world are fine to enjoy you know if you've got a hobby or stuff like that you know god's not a killjoy you know enjoy those things i love marine fish and that's one of my hobbies and every now and then i go to the fish shop and buy uh, a new fish for the tank and that's absolutely fine but it's keeping a perspective on things in life and that's where it's so easy to go too far one way or the other 
For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And it's very much, you know, if I, if I think of my son, my youngest son, he's, uh, he's in his first relationship and uh, he loves his girlfriend, India, and uh, it's all flowers and roses and they've been together for, well, coming up to a couple of years soon. And, uh, you know, they're a really great couple. And if I was to say to my son, Caleb, look, we need you to contribute to the running of the house financially, or we need you to uh, not go out today because we want to do X, Y, and Z. He will struggle. Why? Because his treasure is somewhere else, ultimately. But if it comes to his girlfriend, there's no amount of money that is withheld, you know, and there's no time that he, he doesn't want to give her. Why? Because that's where his treasure is. He's caught up at this stage in life, in this romance, you know. So he's putting his time, his money, his thoughts, his emotion into this. And, and that's where we've got to remember, things are great, but we've got to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got to focus, we've got to remember our first love. And the Word of God says, you know, sometimes we forget our first love. And it says, look how far you have fallen, you have forsaken your first love. And it's very important as we go into 2021 to go in with a clear understanding that being on fire with the Lord, you know, that that's so important. Verse 22, the eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Now, the eye is the, what regarded as the porthole to the soul. And we take in more with our eye than our ear. You won't necessarily remember certain dialogue in a movie you saw, but you will remember the scene. You know, sometimes you won't remember a conversation you had with somebody two years ago, the detail of it, but you will be able to envision that situation or that holiday or whatever it is. See, what you allow into your life through the eye penetrates your whole being, your whole body. And that's where we have to be very careful. We have to be protective of what we watch. You know, the barriers have come down over the years in um, censorship. When you look at TV and films, I mean, years ago when I was a lad, you know, there's stuff in almost kids' films now that you would never have seen. Not in a month of Sundays. It would have been regarded as, as too explicit. If you look at music nowadays, if you just go to a music shop and look at modern albums and you'll have so many warnings about explicit language contained in the records. You know, you look at so many TV shows and uh, they're so sensual and sexual and so on and so forth. And we can see that the, the general standard over the last 20 years, the, the age of the internet, has just dropped so so, so much, very gently, and you almost don't realise it, and you can kind of get caught in it and think, well, it's not that bad, you know, it's just life, it's the way people are. And we have to be careful because what we expose ourselves to actually affects us, you know, it's just reality. There is a connection between what we see and our behaviour. I know for young men, if they see a lot of uh, pornographic stuff, then that's going to cause a lot of stuff uh, desires within them, you know, which they're going to struggle with. And so we have to be careful of what we allow into our eyes and to penetrate our body. You know, uh, one, one thing I would say, you know, in the end times, I believe there'll be a real drive in mature Christians for holiness, you know, and uh, holiness is so important, you know, because the Lord said, be holy as I am holy. Now, of course, we, we have sin in our lives and we fail and we falter. But the, the more I've grown in the Lord, especially the last five years, uh, there's been this rekindling in my life, a desire for holiness. And God wants that for us. Verse 24. No one can serve two masters. You will either hate the one and love the other or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. 
Now, a lot of people take this out of context and they say, oh, money's the root of all evil. The Bible says money's the root of all evil. Well, it doesn't actually say that. It says the love of money. In other words, putting money first. When money drives you, when money's more important than relationships, when you're willing to con a brother or sister out of an inheritance, when you're willing to cheat and scheme financially at the cost of other people, you know, it's the love of money is the root of all evil because it, it causes us, it's a knock-on effect. We become greedy, we become selfish, we become uncaring, unkind, we refuse to help, uh, we, we're no longer charitable, uh, we don't give to the Lord, we don't give to the ministries of his kingdom. We become the love of money and, and in actual fact the, the, the one translation is the love of mammon. It's what money can achieve. Money in itself is, well, it's nothing. Uh, 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 cash is just an IOU. That's all it is. You're passing it around. But it's what it achieves. And sometimes we can be so driven. And in our desires for the new year, you know, I'm with you. You know, Lord, I want to be a millionaire. I want to be, uh, I want to have my own house. I want to have this. I want to have all these lovely things. But it's you first. And I'm not going to compromise myself. I'm not going to start thinking, well, I'm going to buy this house, but uh, at the cost of everything else, you know. And we, we, we live in a society that drives us to just work to live. Uh, we work to live, sorry, not live to work, you know. And, and enough almost seems never enough. There's no contentment. And so we have to be very careful because it drives us and it can cause real relationship problems. And, you know, the economy of the kingdom of God is the complete opposite to that of the world. In the world, it's give me, give me, give me. I've got to take, get as much as I can. Well, the economy of the kingdom of God is give and you'll be blessed. Give to other people. Help the marginalised. Give your time, give your heart, give your finances. One of the biggest things you can give to people is your heart. That, that's your very centre, the cedardale of your being, you know, and it gets damaged, it gets hurt, and it gets abused by people, even Christians. And so we can end up, you know, you can be a really loving person, but get caught up in self-preservation so that you no longer give yourself anymore. You know, and I encourage you in 2021, be a giver of your heart. Jesus gave his heart willingly to all those who loved him and even those who despised him. He still loved them. At the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Now, yes, they knew that they were killing a man, but they didn't know in the fullness of who Jesus was, the King of glory, the darling of heaven. And as you go into 2021, I encourage you, be a giver. Be a giver. And you like, might look and say, well, I haven't got anything to give. Trust me, that widow, she gave two small coins and yet she gave more than anyone. And sometimes we have to give out of our poverty, not just our wealth, and be faithful. So be a giver to people. Verse 25, therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, about the body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air, for they do not sow and reap and store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than them? So Jesus is saying that one of the plagues of humanity is worry. We worry. And he's saying, look, don't worry. You have a reason not to worry. And that is because you have a heavenly father. You know, what are the birds of the air in comparison with you? And yet God looks after those birds of the air, you know. And sometimes it is hard not to worry because we're put under so much pressure. But you can feel 2021 full of worries, concerns, about so many different things, and most of our concerns never become reality. You know, abundant life is to walk without worry. That's an abundant life. That's freedom, you know. 
sometimes of worrying what people think of us, worrying about uh, how we look, worrying about what we've got, worrying about if we'll be rejected or if we'll be accepted, worrying about all these different things. And that's not abundant life at all. Now, we shouldn't have a care less attitude. We should live wisely, and it's important to honour the Lord in the way we live, but not a life full of worry. He goes on, can any one of you add a single hour to your life? You know, worry does the complete opposite. It actually retracts from your life. It can shorten your lifespan. It can cause high blood pressure. It can cause various diseases. It can cause depression. It can cause uh, isolation. It can cause mental health issues. It can cause uh, feelings of rejection. You know, there's so many things attached to worrying. Sometimes people are led to the point of suicide, self-harming. Why? Because they're worrying. They're worrying about so many things where worriers, mankind has become plagued with worry. And Jesus is saying, look, for all your worrying, you can't add a single hour onto your life. You know, and he's saying, take a step of faith. He says, cast your burdens onto me for I care for you. Don't go into 2021 with a whole sack full of crap on your shoulder and you're going to drag it into the year and you can't stand up and you can't run because you've got all this stuff on your shoulders. Go into 2021 saying, Lord, I'm going to trust you with this stuff. I'm going to honour you, I'm going to walk the right way and I'm going to trust you with my problems. You know, who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life, he says. It achieves nothing beneficial for you. Don't be a warrior. Be a warrior. Fight. Cast off those burdens. Now, I'm not saying you sit there and pretend you've got no problems. Of course not. That's stupidity. I'm saying go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I need X, Y and Z. Father, I have a fear of rejection. Father, I'm concerned I'm not going to be able to do my job properly. Father, I need you. I'm pressing on God. For me, you know, lots of lots of pastors and churches out there, they would say, right, well, they'll have their slogans for the year. 2021, the year of supernatural provision. 2021, the year of crossing over to a new level. 2021, the year of uh, battling new devils. 2021, the year of success and restoration and all these things. Do you know what? 2021 for me, more of you, Lord. 2020 for me, more of you, Lord. 2019 for me, more of you, Lord. 2018 for me, more of you, Lord. 2022 for me, more of you, Lord. I don't need a special word. I don't need a, a quick slogan or a, a, a little banner declaring X, Y, and Z. If you go on YouTube and look at a lot of churches uh, uh, over the years, the stuff they've said, it's been the complete opposite for them anyway. You know, uh, we best be careful and start prophesying right. If you're going to prophesy, prophesy correctly. Don't just stand there giving out wonderful good luck slogans about what the year's going to be. You know, get a grip. Jesus first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Jesus said, you will have trouble in this world. Yet after church, he's running around saying, oh, we're going to be trouble free. Get a grip. You know, come on, church. Let's be real with our real Jesus. Let's move in truth, absolute truth. Yes, there's positive confirmation through the words. Yes, stand on the promises of God. But there are some promises that people are standing on that weren't made to you. They were made to the saints of old for a particular purpose. They weren't made to you. You are the New Testament church. Our purpose is to witness Jesus Christ's death, resurrection, uh, death, burial, and resurrection, and to share the good news around the world. That's our commissioning. Love God with all your heart. Love your brother as yourself. Come on, we don't even fulfil that. Yet you want to have your great slogan to go and conquer the world and stand at the top of every mountain and we can't even feel fulfill love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your brother as yourself. Forgive one another. 
bless you. <laughs> it's just true, somebody stuck. So I'm going into 2021 with a conviction that Christ in me, the hope of glory. I'm going in knowing I've got the favour of God on my life. I'm going in wanting to be more for him. I'm going in, like Paul said, more of you and less of me. You know? Hallelujah. So why do you worry about clothes? Look at the flowers of the fields, how they grow. They do not labour or spin. Yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendour was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the fields which is here today and gone tomorrow, thrown into the fire, how much more will he not clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Sometimes, I, I mean, that reflects to me, if you, if you take a plant or a flower and you look at the beauty of it, you look at it under a microscope, it's absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. And for mankind, with all our intelligence, we've never created anything in reality. What we've done, we've took elements that already existed, put them together and mixed them. That's all what we've done. We never created anything. Think of an egg and bacon sandwich. Egg and bacon sandwich... Well, we didn't create that. There was already an egg and there was already a pig for some bacon. And all we did is put them two together and we got an egg and bacon sandwich. But we never created the elements of it, you know. And the wonderful thing about an egg and bacon sandwich, it's a bit like our own life. The chicken played a part, but it was the pig who was committed. Okay, I'll let that sink in for you. But, you know, Jesus is saying... Understand your importance. A lot of the time we don't come into the fullness of what God has for us because we haven't really comprehended our importance to him. How much he loves us. You know, and we, you, can, you can get into this thing, well, I know he died for me, but he's kind of died for everybody. He died for the whole world. Well, I know he loves me, but he kind of loved it. You know, you need a fresh revelation of God's love for you. He is God. He is God. And he can love the entire world and at the same time love you like you're the only person on earth. Why? Because he's God. He is God. So not even Solomon was dressed in all these things. And these things are thrown away into fire and burn. So verse 31, uh, at the end of verse 30, it said, You have little faith. So faith is important as we walk into the new year. Faith. How does faith come about? Faith is developed in a relationship with God. First you believed the message of salvation and you responded to it. And then you get to know Jesus. And your faith begins to grow because you begin to understand who he is. You begin to understand what the Father's desires are for you. You begin to see the Holy Spirit moving in your life and your faith like a muscle begins to grow and grow. And here Jesus is talking to the Jews and he's saying, you have little faith. You are under the law. You're living your life under the law. You're doing everything according to the 613 laws. And he's saying, now I want you to move into a new realm of faith. And he says, oh ye of little faith. So do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For pagans run after all these things. Pagans were people without a God. And they run after all these things. It wasn't a real God that they worshipped. They worshipped the things that were created and not the creator. And that's the danger that we can face. We end up putting a higher value on what is created rather than the creator. You know, we have to be careful. Your heavenly father, for pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly father knows that you need them. Isn't that the wonderful thing? He knows you need them. It's important to us, but he knows you need them. He's not stupid. You know, if you buy a car, you kind of know you've got to put petrol in it. Otherwise, it ain't going to go far. It's, it's part of the deal. And when God created us, he knew we would have needs. It was part of the covenant. And in the covenant, he said, you know what, I'm going to meet your needs. But you just need to be ready to receive it. 
You know, if you don't take your car to a garage and open up the petrol cap, guess what? The petrol ain't going to mysteriously just uh, evolve and uh, jump in by itself. It takes you to take the car to the garage so that the petrol can be put in. Well, it's the same with the things that are there for us with the Lord. We need to go to the Lord and he will fill us. And then probably the most famous uh, scripture in this uh, passage. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Do you know it's so true? It's so true. I mean, just put on the news and you see the trouble that the country's in, the world is in, the economy's in, the health service is in, uh, all these different, the planet, global warming and everything, everything, it's all got enough trouble of its own. Let worry, worry about worry. Let trouble be concerned with trouble. There will always be trouble. There will always be forms of persecution. There will always be opposition. You know, that's just reality. But it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. So what does Jesus say about these things? He acknowledges our needs. He acknowledges that we're human. He acknowledges that our faith is small sometimes. And he says, here's the answer. If you want the key to 2021, as you enter into this year, if you want the key, he says, seek first the kingdom of God. And how many believers have stopped seeking first the kingdom of God? That means put the kingdom of God first in your life again. Not you first, not your desires first, kingdom first. He says, and then all these things that you need, they're going to be added. They'll be added on. But it's the kingdom of God first. And sometimes we can say, well, we've done that. Yeah, but what was your motive in it? Oh, I'll give to God because then he'd give me back tenfold. Press down, shaken together, running over. Well, what's that motive? We're only giving to get. Now, now, in one sense, it's just the economics of the kingdom of God that you're never going to be able to outgive him and you're never going to be able to outbless him. But it's looking at motives sometimes, you know? And so many people uh, through this pandemic in 2020 had backslidden. People have lost their commitment. I see it across Facebook. I see it in the churches. People have lost their commitment to the Lord. People don't even get up on a Sunday morning to, to tune in and be spoon-fed the Word of God whilst they lay in bed in the, on their iPad. They can't even be bothered to do that anymore. And we must put first the kingdom of God because otherwise we're going to face problems. And we say, God, where are you in 2021? And he's going to say, well, I've been here all the time. But you would not listen. You would not tune in. You wouldn't read your word. You stopped praying. You stopped giving. Your commitment became half-hearted. You became lukewarm. One of the worst things in the world is, for me is a lukewarm cup of tea. It's lukewarm is just good for nothing. You know, I love a cup of tea. I'm a big tea drinker. And it's got to be hot. It's got to be hot. You know, uh, people, we either like hot drinks or cold drinks. I love a lovely hot cup of tea or like a nice cold orange juice or, or whatever it is. Either, either nice and cold. My friend Tony, he loves cold drinks. He puts half of the blooming Antarctic in there with the, all the ice that he puts in. And he loves it. But when you have stuff that's lukewarm, it's just neither here nor there. Church, let's not be lukewarm as we go into this year for Jesus. Let's be on fire. Let's be hot. Stir up the gift of faith that is within you. We keep asking, Lord, give me faith, give me faith, give me faith. He said, I gave you faith. You're not using it. Stir it up. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, Jesus said. Then all these things will be added to you. So we've got to, we've got to reevaluate. And that's what a lot of people do at the beginning of a new year. They reevaluate Things change in value. If you look at gold, you take a gold ring, for example. Get my one off. If you take a gold ring, for example, maybe four years ago, that would be of a certain value. And then two years ago, that value could change because gold goes down in value. 
But now, maybe gold has gone back up in value. So you have to re-evaluate with gold. You have to constantly evaluate what is its worth. And sometimes we need to re-evaluate our life and where we're putting our time and our energy and the impact we're making on the kingdom of God. Are we just sitting there having a free ride? Are we actually making a difference in loving the Lord and loving one another? You know, so sometimes you need to re-evaluate because things can change in value. You know, and where you are in life can change in value. It's good to have a plan. It's good to evaluate your life. As we move into the new year, we need to make sure we've got godly order. You know, godly order. And the only way you'll do that is by spending time with the Lord. You know, you, you, you can't just download it. You've got to spend time with God. That's how we get to know one another. One of my big frustrations in this pandemic has been I can't spend time with people. And there are people that at the beginning of 2020, I kind of said, well, I want to spend more time with these people. I want to get to know them more. I really like them. And I haven't been able to meet up with them because of the various lockdowns, and it's frustrating. But we, we need to think about who's in our life and how we can bless people. Now, goals are healthy. There's nothing wrong with having desires. Desire a promotion. Desire a new house. Desire a nicer car. Desire a, a wonderful holiday. Desire the, That's all fine. Your personal goals and ambitions, they're the desires for your life. They're wonderful. Write them down. Put them before God. It's great. Ask God to bless you with suddenness. Ask him to bless you with health. Ask him to bless you financially. Whatever it is, that's no problem at all. And like any father, he loves to bless. We love to bless people. My wife's been working really hard at the hospital and she's uh, half French, half Spanish. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to earn some brownie points. I know she's been working hard. And I went to the supermarket, I bought loads of her favourite food. And I, I wrote out a card to her and her favourite drinks. And I put it all on the table last night. So when she came home, she just knew she was appreciated. You know, and sometimes we have to do things to show our commitment, to show our appreciation, especially of people who are near and dear, because often they're the ones we can take for granted. And I just wanted her to know that we love her and she's a blessing. And what she's doing uh, in, in the National Health Service is remarkable. You know, the, the other night they lost 10 patients They've got nearly 300. My wife is sitting there day after day, night after night, fighting, fighting for people to stay alive. Fighting. And she's a fighter. She won't give up. Some of the other medical staff give up and say, well, that person's not going to make it anyway. May as well just move on. And she won't. She's a fighter. And she's like, no, while there's life, there's hope. And she's fighting in the physical realm with medication and machinery. And she's fighting in the spiritual realm, praying and warring over every single one of her patients. And I encourage you, if you're watching this, pray for Mara Guest, the nurse. Pray for God to equip her. Pray for God to do miracles through her. In that place of death and darkness, there is a light that's shining. And that light is Jesus Christ in Mara Guest. So I ask that you would encourage her. Pray for us. We need your prayers. Now we leave a year that's been plagued with heartache and disappointment and cancellations, confusion, debt, uh, financial instability, isolation, loneliness, uh, uh, massive inconvenience, uh, lack of education for children, lack of proper health care apart from coronavirus, uh, lack of security, uh, shops and businesses folding and all these things, bitterness, division, coming in. I even see it with the whole uh, black-white issue where, you know, racism has got worse. These people battling against racism, in some ways, it's almost got worse. And we, we, we're in a situation in the world where everything's such a mess. But you know what? We're in the end times. 
it's going to get bad. I'm not going to butter you up and say, listen, guys, everything's going to be lovely. I'd be lying because the word of God doesn't say everything's going to be lovely. It says, look, although things go bad, I'm going to be with you in it. I'll not leave you and I'll not forsake you. But the end will come. You've only got to read, read Revelations, read Matthew, read 1 John, read Daniel. You soon see what's going to happen in this world. The mark of the beast will come. The end time is coming. Money's going out of circulation. Man has become lovers of self. You know? Even, even England leaving Europe, I believe, is a part of the biblical mandate for the end times. It's another page turner in the spiritual realm. And I'm telling you, we are in those last days. Don't start living as if we're not. Take your blinkers off. Be ready. Have your testimony sharp for the Lord. Be on fire. Be ready. Be equipped. Get your priorities right as we enter into 21. 2021. Listen, church, you might not enter out of it. The rapture could come. The rapture could well come. So I encourage you. Oh, it's the rapture, the removing of the church, the removal of the church where Jesus will call us up to be with him in the heavens. When you look at the society today, uh, promiscuality, the, the, the whole sexual side of society nowadays, the abuse in society nowadays, the greed in society nowadays, the pandemics, the earthquakes, the tsunamis, the, the fires, the plagues, the, all these different things. Man alive, if you can't see it, you're blind. But we are not discouraged. We are not those who step back and hide in our caves full of fear. No, the, the righteous are as bold as a lion and we can look these things head on. Why? Because Jesus is with us and we know what's going on. So let us, let the church enter with hope. Let's not be backslidden in our mentality. Effective church, the world cannot afford for you to fall asleep. Wake up, you sluggard. Scripture says, wake up. As we enter this year, let's enter with hope. We can make a difference in people's lives. We can encourage people. God is a God of answering prayer. We might see this year change. Maybe you're waiting for a husband or a wife or a partner. Maybe you're waiting for the promotion. Maybe you're waiting for the healing. Well, maybe this year is the year that God's going to do it for you. But it's seek him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Go into this year with triumph. Don't go into this year thinking I'm going to lose my job. Go into this year thinking, well, in this day and age, Things are not looking good, but I'm going to trust you, Lord. Scripture says that Jesus ever liveth to make intercession for the saints. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus isn't sitting up in heaven on holiday thinking, you know, you lot can get on with it. He's interceding for us. We need to, again, we need to keep the focus. Don't be distracted. One of the big dangers with Israel, Israel Israel reminds me in the Old Testament of a five-year-old child. God is forever getting their focus and saying, look, this is what you need to do. Do your homework, then you can play. Eat your greens, then you can play. Do your maths, then you can play. Tidy your room, then you can play. And Israel is like this naughty child that just gets distracted. Like the kid who's in class and they're, they're, they're doing their their work and then suddenly they go into a dream, they're looking out the window and they've completely got distracted from what they're meant to do. And that's even the church of today. We have to be careful. Even in Moses' day, the, despite the wonderful things God had done, setting the Israelites free from Egypt, they got distracted again. When Moses went up to get the Ten Commandments, immediately they've decided to get all their gold together and to melt it all down and make a golden calf, all get naked and start worshipping it. They'd only gone up the mountain to get the Ten Commandments and immediately the father figure was absent, the children were distracted because there was no order and God is a God of order. So Moses come down and as a father he has to rebuke them and say guys get a grip what you're doing blah 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 and get things put right why because they get distracted and we do 
In the days of Haggai, the prophet, uh, they, were, they were told to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. And they were provided with all the materials and all the panelling for the temple and everything else. And the Israelites, what did they do? They had all this wealth to do all these things for the kingdom of God. And instead, they ended up spending it all on themselves. And instead of building the temple, they started building their, their own panelled houses, which were luxurious houses. And they left the temple in ruins. And how many of us are so concentrated on building our own lives and we're not fulfilling the things of the kingdom of God? Me included. I'm in the bag. Is seek ye first the kingdom of God. Israel, dissatisfied with the priests that God had ordained over them. And they see over there, oh, they've got a king, I want a king. It's not fair. They've got a king, we ain't got a king, we've got a priest. I want us to have a king. Why can't we have a king? They've got one, I want one. And Israel becomes that five-year-old child again. And in the end, God ends up giving them what was not necessarily his best for them. Abraham is told he's going to have a child of promise. And he and his wife become impatient and they decide to go for a B plan and, and go about it their own way. And you end up with this complete mess in society, the result of it, which lasts to even this day. And the child of promise. They had to wait for, but they couldn't wait, and they, 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 their hands dirtied the water, it mucked up, and you, you ended up with two nations being born, two people being born, two kingdoms, as it were. Stay focused. Jesus first. And you might say, oh, I can't hear from God, I don't know what he wants for me for this year, you know, so many people have got it all worked out. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Do you know what? A lot of that is just a load of old baloney. At the end of the day, you know, oh, God's told me in 2021, I'm going to have this, that, and the other, da, 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 da. you know, that's great, if that's you, wonderful. For most people, it doesn't work that way, okay? Take the pressure off yourself, okay? And God may tell you, son, what he does say, he says, I'll give you the desire of your heart. And Jesus is saying, look, seek ye first the kingdom of God, have that as your first desire, and guess what? All your other desires, all these other needs, all these other things, they're going to come into place. So I just cut to the chase. I think, blow all that. My, my vision for this year is Jesus, the hope of glory in my life. Be number one. Be number one. I know everything else. I'll not come out of the will of God. Why? Because I'm following the Messiah. I'm following Jesus. I'm keeping my eyes on the author and perfecter of my faith. Therefore, I don't need to worry about conjuring up a load of things. Yeah, it's good to plan. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't plan, don't have desire. But when you have to conjure them up, you suddenly think, oh, you know. Sometimes the future can look a little bit different to what we think. Sometimes we think we should do X, Y and Z or A, B, C. But God doesn't necessarily work through that simple format. Sometimes in the eyes of, the eyes of God and the eyes of men can be very different. Sometimes the people that God would choose to bless you can be very different to the ones that you were thinking of to bless you. Sometimes the people God wants to put you under can be very different to the ones you want to be under. You know, when God chose uh, for the Israelites, he chose a man called Gideon, who was the weakest in his clan, the weakest in his family. Yet God chose him. The Israelites wouldn't have chosen him. And he even admits, I wouldn't even choose myself. Don't choose me. Oh, you got it wrong here. Oh, don't choose me. But yet who God chooses, he's down to God. Why? Because God's working through them. Who would have chose Peter to be the first pastor of the church and the, 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 the apostle of all apostles, as it were, the father of the church? No, we wouldn't have chose Peter. We would have said, hang on a minute. He blimmin' walked away from the Lord in his hour of need. Don't choose Peter, Peter the plonker. No way. Don't You can't trust the man. He denied Christ, not once, not twice, but three times. It's not like he made one mistake, he made a catalogue of them. Remember, even when Jesus was with us, he turned man, starts giving it large, and Jesus had to say to him, get behind me, Satan. 
And you want us to put that man in charge of us? You want us to walk behind that man? What sort of example is he set for us? He's a hypocrite. But God says, that's my man. Upon his revelation, I'm going to build my church. So you don't know. Be open to the Lord. Paul? Paul as an apostle? Saul? The religious zealot? Saul? Who was killing the Christians? And now you're going to send him to spread the gospel to the Gentiles and convince people of Jesus? Are you mad? Have you absolutely become deranged? This man is a murderer. We can't trust him. How is God going to work through such a hardened religious heart? He's just full of the law. He even admits it. Nobody knows the law better than I. And he said, when it comes to sinning, I am the chief amongst sinners. And we want to send him off as an apostle with the love of Jesus in his heart. <coughs> Crazy. But that's what God does. That's what God does. Don't overlook yourself. Who knows what God could do through you? 2021. He can do it. It's up to him. It's up to him. Just be willing. So reevaluate your life as you go into this year. Have some real time before the Lord. Just say, Lord, as David, Lord, give me a contrite heart. Lord, know my heart. Lord, I don't even know myself sometimes. As Paul said, I don't do what I should do and I do do what I shouldn't do. I just feel that I'm at war within myself. And he said, you know, Lord, I just lay myself before you. You know, colour in. Colour in this outline of a man. Bring the colour, bring the life to this picture that I am. And you choose, Lord. You choose. As we go into this new year, remember, you're not going into it alone. Never will I leave you and never will I uh, abandon you, says the Lord. So you've got to be careful. A lot of people use Jesus as a good luck charm. Oh, he's in their pocket and when disaster comes, they quickly get him out. <laughs> quickly say a prayer, touch wood, touch this, touch the cross. Oh, where's my cross? Oh, I'll be right. What a load. You, mate, you could be on your way to hell. That don't mean jack. Jesus is not a good luck charm and he's not a get out clause every time you've got a problem. He wants a relationship with you. He loves you. Get your life in order. Follow him with all that you are. Commit your days unto the Lord. He's not a good luck charm. If you just use Jesus as a good luck charm, you haven't got a relationship with him. And if you haven't got a relationship with him, guess what? It means he doesn't know you. And what does Jesus say in the end times? Oh, but we did this, we did that, Jesus, we did the other. And he said, flee from me, for I do not know you. Oh, they knew him. They recognised who Jesus was. They knew he was King of kings and Lord of lords. They knew. But he didn't recognise, he said, I do not know you. There was no relationship. You only used me as a good luck charm. He said, I want to be Lord of your life. Lord. Lordship. Oh, wonderful security in Jesus. Our salvation, our rock. He loves us and he has poured out such grace for us. You know, and he knows our shortcomings. He knows all your mistakes in 2020 and he loves you. He knows all your sin of 2021 and he says it's already bought and paid for. I've already paid the price because I love them. Romans 5 verse 1 says this, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? We're not his enemy. He loves us. We've got peace through Jesus, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace. And that's what we need. We need the grace of God. It's the gospel of grace. And you will only get access to that grace which can save you 
through Jesus Christ. There's no other way. There's no other answer. There's no other God. That is it. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Not only so, but also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. What a wonderful, comforting scripture, church. He's got you. He's got you. Though the world may be falling apart, though the end may be coming, he's got you and he's got you for eternity. He hasn't bought you on lease that you've got to go back after five years. He bought you once and for all. He said, it's finished, they're mine. And he said, I do not lose any of the sheep of my pasture. Just make sure that you are truly in his pasture. In closing, James chapter 1 verse 13. James chapter 1 verse 13. Now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry out business and make money, while you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. And James just puts into reality, put back into perspective. Do you know what? We don't even know what tomorrow holds. We don't. The only plan that is absolutely 100% solid is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ being Lord of your life. You know, last year, how many people planned a holiday? Last year. Didn't get it. Never saw that coming. Not in a month of Sundays. How many people planned to go shopping at this, that and the other and suddenly couldn't go? How many people were planning to have an operation and it got cancelled? How many people were planning to start a new job and it didn't materialise? How many people were planning to buy a new house but then couldn't? How many people were planning and planning and planning? It just shows you how fragile things are. But how many planned to walk close to the Lord and he held them and maintained them and sustained them for his glory because he loves them. Ah, oh, church, I encourage you. I know this isn't your normally your normal crossing over preach and come on, come alive in 85 and la da 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 all that. But I just want to re I just feel a burden on my heart that the Church of Jesus Christ, really, we need to move into reality. Be careful of false prophets. There's so much stuff on the internet right now. People prophesying this, prophesying that. No one prophesied about the flipping pandemic, did they? Where were your prophets then? You know? But I, I, I don't want to mock prophets, but be careful. You know, prophecy is true and it's good and it's important. We need it in the church and I respect the gifting and I'm thankful to have had that gifting is in my own life, but it's got to be in line with the word of God and it must be proven right. Okay? The scripture says, you know, weigh it up, judge it. You know? Let's just be right with God. Let's be 10 miles inland. Don't flirt with the world anymore. Let's be 10 miles inland. Let's be sold out for Jesus Christ. You know, and his grace to us is wonderful because even when we've let him down, even when we've failed, even when we've flirted with the world, even when we've walked away, even when we've sinned, do you know what? Like the prodigal father, he loves us. He loves us. He said to Israel in one verse in Jeremiah, you are a prostitute. Two chapters later, he said, you are my virgin bride. Only God can do that. Only God can bring such reconciliation, such restoration that he can take someone from being a prostitute to becoming a virgin. How do you do that physically? And it's, in, it's an impossible an impossibility, but not with our, our God. Our God can do all things. Hallelujah. So I encourage you, take 2021 full of faith, full of desire, full of hope, full of love. God bless your heart. We'll see you real soon. 
Don't forget, please share the videos. Please keep in contact with us through social media. Keep encouraging people around you. Go on our website. You can look that up online. Go on our Facebook pages. Uh, uh, go on our YouTube pages. Uh, if you've missed some of the sermons in this season, especially if you're a member of the church, I encourage you, take the time to listen to them so that you can be in sync and in unity what God is doing through Effective Life Church. We love you. God bless you. And uh, of course, you can look up my own uh, ministry website, which is uh, www.effectivelifeministry.com or dot .org, either the one. Look it up, Matthew Guest. God bless your heart, and I hope to see you soon. Take care, guys. Bless you.